Hiya, I'm Mackenzie and this is my bookshelf. I'm not drinking tea again, sorry. I'm just not in the mood for tea right now. And I just, I don't know, I just don't feel like drinking tea today. Sorry, I said that would be a thing, but it probably won't be because, first of all, I don't have that much tea in my house. And then second of all, I'm not gonna wanna drink tea like every time I make a video because that would suck. Maybe in the future that will happen, but Sorry about no tea. Today is another book review. Today we are reviewing the book. Ooh, jeez. Watch for you throw it next time. Passenger by Alexandra Bracken. Uh, this book is so amazing. I have been wanting to read this book for a really, really long time. So when I finally got the chance to buy it, I snatched it up and bought it. it it's a really good book. Uh, I really love the cover on it, but we'll get into that in a second. But this book is so good. If you haven't read it, go read it. You're stupid if you haven't, and you're probably saying, oh wait, I've already read it. This book has been out for a while now. Well, I'm behind. Don't get mad at me. So let's go look at the cover. So here's the front cover. It's really, really pretty. I love how the word is written out, and I really like the bottle. It's really, really pretty. And it's kind of shiny, but you can't really tell on the camera, I'm sorry, but it has a little bit of shine to it, and it has a bottle with New York City, and then the reflection of the bottle with the pirate ship in it. Um, like I said in my haul, I think I said it was, that this book is really pretty inside and out, so here's what I mean by that. Here's the outside, and then you take off the sleeve, and it's beautiful here too. I really love it. It, it, it. This reminds me of the Tree of Life. I don't know if it's supposed to be the Tree of Life, but I really think it's pretty and reminds me of it. And again, passenger and really pretty words. So that's the outside of the book. And like I said, it's pretty on the outside and the inside. Yes, I know. Super. For the non-spoiler portion of this video. I'm going to explain to you this book, hopefully not spoiling anything. So basically this girl, Edda, she uh, loves playing violin and she has gotten to the point of she wants to make playing violin her career. So she's about to go on this, con go to perform like her first solo concert thing. And she hears this noise and this girl like drags her off and she ends up going through this portal which like, she lands on a pirate ship in New York City. So, I don't, I think it's, I'm sorry. But I'm not gonna suppose She ends up in New York City uh, in a pirate ship. And basically she finds out that she has to go uh, find this artifact that belongs in her family and she basically has to find this artifact and bring it back to this one guy to uh, save her mom from being on kept from being captured by him. So she wants to save her mom by finding the artifact and bringing it back to him. And so her mom gets released from captivity by this guy. Uh, I don't want to go any further into it because I'll spoil it. So. That's the non-spoiler part of it. Disclaimer, if you're watching this video and you haven't read the book yet, stop right now. 
and exit the video because this part is going to spoil so much for you. You're not going to want to listen to it if you haven't read it. And once you do read it, hey, come back. Watch the video again. Watch the spoilers. That's the fun part about YouTube. You don't have to watch a video once. You can watch it as many times as you want. So we're going to go and get with the spoiler section. I'm going to start with a sentence that really got me into the rest of the book. I thought it was really cool and I thought it was really, really beautiful too. Uh, it's the last sentence on page 135. Um, it says, and in a thousand different ways, she was just as entirely out of his reach. That sentence was so beautiful to me. I was like, oh my gosh. It's like, He's falling in love with, Nicholas is falling in love with Ada, but he also isn't, like, if that makes sense. I'm not really sure if it does or not, but I was like, dude, this is amazing. <laughs> and that sentence just really got me into the rest of the book, and I fell in love with the rest of the book from that point. I'm not saying that I didn't like the book up to that page. I loved it. Of course I did. But it just brought me to realization like dude this book is amazing why why haven't you read this before and I was like oh and I just fell in love and I started texting the book nerd about it I was like dude the sentence killed me but I, I didn't tell him what sentence it was but I told him I just read the sentence that empowered I'm reading the book and I get to chapter 11 and obviously Etta has not seen the movie Back to the Future or watched Doctor Who or watched watched anything or read anything with the, the where the characters are time traveling. And Etta is not the smartest one on this part. She doesn't realize that if you cross paths with the, your past self, you can cause like a rip in the time space continuum or even worse and just like explode the whole world and Eddie doesn't realize this and I'm like Edda what's wrong with you you obviously haven't read or watched anything about time travel you are a delinquent about that and we get to chapter 12 things are going great um, she goes to Alice's house and Alice is young and the first thing Alice says is, I don't have any tea. Now, if I wasn't at his place, I would have turned around and went home. Because if you don't have tea, I'm out. Nicholas starts using this pet name for Etta, and that is everything for me. Like, he's like pirate. I'm like, oh, that is so cute. Just keep doing that I'm I fangirl over things like that and I think it's really cute and I keep looking that way because my dog's in my room and he's trying to get out but I'm not going him out until I finish filming keep reading I, I feel it feels like I'm going chapter by chapter but I'm not it's just how I wrote down stuff that thought was weird or interesting or cool or something so on in chapter <laughs> Oh, you just ruined this. You know what? Chapter th <laughs> Can't leave anything. He gets into bed. I can't leave anything down. Chapter 13, and I start to notice that Nicholas has this bipolar brain that's going on in his head. Half of him wants to buy a brand new ship. Half of him wants Edda. Now, he could pick the right ship, but am I right? Yeah! That was supposed to be funny. Probably wasn't though. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, he's eating my clothes. I then start to realize that Edda and Nicholas have this Finn and Ray type of relationship from Star Wars. Like, uh, Edda's like, no, I can do things on my own, I don't need you to help me, and um, Nicholas is like, let me take your hand, I'll help you, and Edda's like, no, you don't stop holding my hand. That was a Star Wars reference from the new Star Wars. Chapter 14, there's like an official kiss happening here, the ship has sailed, I think, 
personally, I think that's what happened. Um, other things happen in um, other chapters that I'm not going to talk about because it's kind of gross. But, uh, yeah. Chapter 16, I'm going to read this part out of my notes because I'm not going to remember word for word, I'm sorry. And I don't really want to go finding it in the book because it would take me forever. And I don't have the time to do that. But anyways... I'm going to read this part out of my notes. This is from chapter 16, okay? He wanted her lips, her touch, her esteem, her mind. Inside her, beside her, with her. Wait. What? Inside her? Excuse me. Not today, Mr. Pirate. Not today. Chapter 17, he straight out says that he's her husband. Okay, cool. Yeah, then I later learned that He's trying to protect her from uh, the uh, social, like, ways. And he's trying to protect Etta from the social, like, I don't know how to say it, but, like, from the social, like, non-standards of, of certain countries that are, like, if you don't have, like, if you're not married or whatever and you're, like, with a guy, it's bad because that just ruins, like, their, like, culture. Chapter 18, their whole relationship is a go, and, um, so there's, like, these bad guys trying to get rid and not trying to, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's these um, bad guys trying to steal Ella. <clears throat> oh my gosh. And I think Nicholas, he goes all Flynn Rider trying to get Ella back. I mean, he goes Flynn Rider with the frying pan and everything. The last chapters of the book, pretty great, pretty interesting. Um, Ella dies, basically, and then we figure out her mom killed that, was the one that killed Alice. We but, wait, she didn't die? But it said she did. No, it said she did die. Pardon me, everybody. Apparently, Alice is not dead. And she's just, like, somewhere hidden away. Don't know what, wait, what? No. But they specifically said at the beginning book that he was dead, too. Attention, ladies and gentlemen, Julian isn't dead either. He's also somewhere in some other world. Oh, and Henry Hemlock is Edda's dad. Basically, Nicholas is like, all right, I'm going to go save my girl. And he goes all Disney Prince and is like, okay, I'm going to go save my girl. And then it ends. And it's depressing because I want to know what happens but I have to wait till the next book comes out ah! that's it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed this review it was really fun as always I should probably not say that it was really fun to film every time but it is because I enjoy this and I enjoy making videos for you guys and it's really fun and yeah <laughs> Uh, but go cuddle up, drink some tea, and read a book. Until next time.